I went out around uh, 8 o'clock. See this guy I know about uh, crewing on the same boat. I, mean, I had my own boat up till about a year ago, but anyway, uh, we, had a, we had a couple of beers. Well, then I come home. And uh, I come in the door there, and I call out to Marjorie, but uh, she never answered. So uh, then I noticed that the, uh, the basement door there was open. And I walked over and I looked down. And there she was. Just lying. Mrs. Bush called the office and it was forwarded to me. What's the story here? Well, Mrs. Bush came home from where she was staying overnight at her sister's and found him asleep in bed. Well, right away, that was unusual. He never sleeps in. He's got a busy schedule. Is he? I don't know. The car How's she taking it? Ah, oh, distraught. I gave her a mild sedative just after I got here. Separate bedrooms? I'm not his regular doctor. I've never seen him as a patient, but I pulled his records and saw that he has a heart condition. But? Well, I don't know. He may have aspirated. I mean, the tuxedo was left on the chair there. Looks like he went to bed drunk. OK, well, let's have a look then. He may have aspirated. He can definitely smell booze everywhere. Excuse me. What time did that call come in exactly? Do you remember? 6.20, give or take a minute. Did you have a call display? Did you see where that call originated? No, it went to Dr. Haxton, then on to me. His calls are automatically forwarded from a service. Well, this is wrong. The whole picture here is the lividity. You see in his back, the purple marks? Uh -huh. That's where the blood settled. And the white marks here is probably some on his buttocks and also on his legs. Body did not die here. His body was moved. He didn't die face down either. I'll tell you that for free. Died face up. Homicide, please. Leo? Yeah. Well, I'm sorry to disturb your fine morning, but I got a dead federal cabinet minister up here. It's not looking right. This, um, John Doe, were you here when he came in? Yeah, yeah, early this morning. Oh. And, uh, when did she come in? Late last night. Marjorie Diggins, okay. I'll take her first. Okay.
Boy, come tax time, I'm gonna save myself the postage. Just swing by here and stick a few grand in the mail slot. Good idea. We're gonna want the phone records in out of this place the last 24 hours. Okay, under the coroner's act? Yeah, 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 the body's been moved. The body's been moved and the wife there doesn't look like she does dishes or move dead husband's corpses. He stinks of booze, he stinks of vomit, but there's no evidence of any stomach contents on his clothes, on the bed sheets, nowhere. All right. Patricia's looking for you. Oh, I, I'm not now. Just wanted to give you the heads up. Parliament's a little lighter this morning. I just came back from Alan Bush's house. He's dead. What were the circumstances? Well, somebody wanted the minister, the cabinet minister, to go to his grave very quietly. Signed a natural death by his doctor, a family friend. But now here, here's the hitch. The doctor's out of town. So he gets to call Dr. Ward. And she called you? That's right. I know some of the players involved here. Maybe I should get into it. I don't know. I, I think that's a bad idea, in my personal opinion. Why is that? Well, because we don't know enough. Uh, this could be uh, this could be bad guys doing their thing. This could be good guys doing bad and stupid things. We just don't know. So, the worst we got here is illegally moving a body, right? So now here comes the autopsy results and changes things around. Jimmy, I don't think you want to be all over this one. Dennis Browse contact you yet? The minister's assistant. Not so far. Uh, he's probably busy stalling the media till they figure out who's going to run in the by-election to replace Bush. Well, he's definitely got his hands full of something. Uh, he was at a fundraiser at the Corrington Hotel, I understand. You know what time that ended? No. Uh, you found him. Uh, was, he, uh, was he on the floor, maybe, or in a chair? No, he was just the way I found him. I noticed when I came in, you have one of those uh, coded security alarm systems on the front door. Who has access to that code? Well, myself, my husband, and a few of the staff. Why do you ask? Well, it appears your husband was moved after he died. Well, what does that imply? Somebody moved him. Now, when you come home and you found him on the bed just the way he is now, did you call anybody? The family doctor. Anybody else? My sister and Dennis Browse. He's the minister's assistant. Hey, hey, I'm uh, I'm reading your report. You asked for just a visual autopsy. Mm -hmm. I figured that was all it needed. Uh huh. And the scene was consistent with a fall down the stairs. Sure, absolutely. There was blood in the stair. There was bits of her hair. Huh. Well, she does have a blow to the head. The cause of death could be a result of that. Any uh, evidence of what might have caused the fall? There was a piece of stripping, you know, like they put at the top of her stair, and it come loose. She probably caught that in her mm -hmm. foot and tripped. Her right wrist is broken. That could have happened on the stairs. Yeah, definitely. I, I figured it's trying to brace her fall. I think I want to do more than a visual here. I'm not comfortable. Well, you're the expert here, so... I'll just change my paperwork to reflect that it was at your request. Fine by me. Okay. Everything's good. Badge. Hey, what happened? You missed your bus? Uh, slipped in. Hey, Ange, when did this come in? Here, from Kim? Uh, I don't know, 15 minutes ago, I think. She said she was in town? No. Nope. Didn't leave a number? Just said she wanted to see you. Who is she? Oh. Mick? There's a visitor here to see you. Eh? Yeah, you too. You should talk in here. The interview room. How romantic. Should have called me. I did. I spoke to your partner. Yeah. Was that her? Yeah, that's her. Yeah, I'm on the job. You should have talked to me. Okay, so if she fell down and knocked her head against the corner of the stair, I'd expect the wound to look more like a puncture. That looked more like a laceration. And the other thing, the fracture to her wrist, was a green stick fracture. That's consistent with a fall, isn't it? Mm-hmm. But also could have been from being twisted hard in someone's grip. Oh, I see where you're going with this. You think this is the result of an altercation? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, the cause of death was a subdural hematoma. Definitely resulted the blow to the head, but the other things rang a bell. Okay, I'll let homicide know you're hearing bells. But I want to tell you this one more time, for the record. I believe the guy about his version of how things went down. I don't know. Seems nice. How the hell can you get that from one look? Unless you had some little conversation with her you're not telling me about. Hey? No, we didn't have a conversation. And yeah, from a look, she seemed nice. Happy to see you. You, on the other hand, seem to be a bit paranoid. Oh, listen, she's real sweet. Everybody loves her. Mm -hmm. but that's not the real her, believe me. You scratch the surface a little bit, it gets weird real fast. Hey, hey, hey. Do me a favor. Not that you got a big mouth or anything, but. Don't tell Sonny she's in town, okay? No sense winding her up over nothing. Am I right? Look, Sonny and I don't talk about her love life. There's no reason for it to come up. Okay, good. But it's not exactly nothing, if you want my opinion. Louis Dickens? Yeah? I'm Detective Leary. This is Detective Cosmo from Vancouver Homicide. I'd like to ask you a few questions about your wife's death, if we could, please. Mm -hmm. I, lo I looked down the basement and uh, Margie was lying right here at the bottom of the stairs. Well, right here? Here, you should just oh, back sorry. off that spot, keep it clear. Yeah, stand over here. So, what'd you do next? I uh, called an ambulance. Is that before you determined she was dead or what happened there? No, no, I, uh, I, said I could see that she wasn't breathing. Okay. I'm gonna need to check your hands for some cuts and bruises. If you don't mind just uh, rolling oh. up your sleeves for me there. I'll need a blood sample. It's just routine. How do you feel about that? Fine by me. Oh, all right. All right. Oh, good. So what time did you say you came in? 9, 9.30. So you had, what, three, four beers with your buddy? No, I had two. That's my limit. And he wasn't my buddy. I was looking for a job. Okay, so you come home, you're a little drunk, and the wife doesn't like that, so she starts beefing at you. No. No, look, I, I told you what happened. I called out to her, and, uh, and she never answered. Was the door locked, or...? Uh, I, I think it was open. Thinks it was open. You know what I think is we should get a uh, forensic investigation team to check out the scene here. Well, that uh, coroner fellow, he took some pictures yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, but we could use all the help we can get so we can get this settled. I'm sure it's going to work out right. I don't know what they'll find, because you know, I cleaned up some. Well, what, what exactly did you clean up? Well, there was blood, you know, where she oh, hit. And what'd you clean up with? Well, just some old rags. We're going to need to see those. And the clothes that you were wearing at the time were those? Well, I did a load of laundry. Uh, they should still be over in the dryer. We're going to need to see those, too. Hey, I heard you made a bum call on the lady that fell down the stairs. I call him as I see him, Leo. What we got here? Oh, uh, that's the phone records from the minister's house. You any coffee going? No, we just ran out. Dee, your mother's holding on line one. Oh, no, tell her I have to call her back, and I promise I will this time. Hi. So we got a call coming into the minister's house at three minutes after three in the morning. That call lasted for nine and a half minutes. At 3 o'clock in the morning, if the wife's of the sisters, who's answering the phone? Maybe Bush may be still alive. Yeah? So where'd that call come from? From a room in the Corrington Hotel. That's where the fundraiser was. Yeah. Now, right after that, at 3.14, there's a call from the minister's house to Mrs. Bush's sister's house. That call lasts for three minutes. So that's the minister calling the wife. Did she mention to you that she talked to him? Because she never said anything like that to me. No. So there's a question. Yeah. Well, the last call was at 319, like two minutes later. And that call is into the minister's house from the same room in the hotel. So what are they talking about from the hotel at 3 o'clock in the morning? And what kind of business? It's politics, baby. Politics. Hey, Peter. Hey, there should have been more than photographs taken here yesterday. Here we are almost 24 hours later, and we've got nothing to go on. The starting point's been erased. I know. Yeah, well, Da Vinci made the call. Give him the brief. 
The uniform on the scene should have run the case by a sergeant. I'm taking it up with him. We can't get a real good read on the husband here. He seems pretty straight. Could be that she tripped. Pathology has a different take. What were her wounds? She had a head wound back here. Well, head wounds tend to bleed out a lot. I should find some evidence of that. Except he cleaned up. I hate these domestic scenes. Complicated as hell. This will be the room right here, registered to Rita Morgan. There were three phone calls made in this room. According to our computer, yes. Thanks. You cleaned the room? It was cleaned this morning. You wanted to see me, sir? This is Detective Shannon with Vancouver Homicide. You were on shift last night? From 5 to 5. I just came back on now. Uh, the concierge here says that uh, you reported something unusual happened in this room last night. Well, it turned out to be a false alarm. Tell me anyway. Well, um, I got a call for room service around 2.15. A woman ordering caviar and champagne for two. All right, so you got the fish eggs and a bubbly and you came up here? Right. Well, I knocked several times and nobody answered. So I went back downstairs, and the desk man, he said that he saw a woman heading for the exit about half an hour before all that. So I look around for security, and can't find him, and I grabbed the pass key and came up here and come on in. And? And there was a man on the bed. And I go, excuse me, and he doesn't answer. And there's, there's vomit, there's vomit everywhere. And I, I gave him a little shake, and he still didn't move. And I go, oh, oh my God, this, this man is, is dead. What did you do then? I, I went back downstairs to find the night security man. How long did that take you? Um, 20 minutes. He wasn't answering his phone or radio, so I couldn't find him. Then I did find him, and we came back up here, and the man in the bed, he was gone. Gone? Gone. Are you sure he was dead the first time you saw him? Oh, yeah. Well, I thought so, but Earl, that's, that's the night security man's name. He figured that the guy was just passed out, and then he woke up and found his girl gone and just took off. That's what Earl figured, huh? Right. Okay. Do you think that you would recognize the man who was in the bed if you saw him again? Oh, sure. Well, it's not every night that you find a guy dead in bed. I want you to spray the stairs, the walls, and this area around here with luminol. Maybe we'll find some blood spatter. blood from the head wound. Some on the bottom stair there. That's where she might have hit her head. Looks like you got a blood trail all the way down from the top there, though, huh? Yeah, which means she was bleeding on the way down, which contradicts the guy's story. Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter anyway. Harness was in here. Da Vinci was in here. Body removal was in here. You guys, not to mention your suspect, who was all over everything in here. It's all contaminated. I don't know. We'll get tossed out of court. If it ever makes it to court. I'm not selling the house. I love that house. That is not what you said when you left. Something about being uh, claustrophobic. Uh, we will discuss this later. Yeah, that's the discussion right there. It's over. Morning. Morning. So where's the cabinet minister? Back at the deep freeze. Perfect. So what about the autopsy now? He died of asphyxiation, the result of aspirating his stomach contents. Okay, so that toxicology is going to be crucial in determining. You sent those samples over to the lab yesterday, right? Yeah, I did, but it's going to be a while. There's a big lineup. A big lineup? This is a cabinet minister we're talking about here. You made that clear? Yeah, I did, and they said they'd put a rush on it, and then they called me back and said it'd be a well. They called you back? What kind of lab was that? RCMP. I want to get those samples. I want to pull them, and we'll send them to a private lab. Hey, Mick. Yeah? Four domestic dispute calls at the Diggins residence in the last year. 
Hmm? Incident reports all say the same thing. Every time it was the wife Marjorie who answered the door. No sign of Lewis. Yeah. Husband Jack rabbits every time she calls 911. Mm -hmm. She tells the officer that she and her husband had a fight about his drinking. Any signs she'd been beat up? Minor cuts and bruises. The reports are negative on any more serious injuries, but hey, mental abuse isn't visible. How do you put that in a report? Yeah, right. I'll see if I can get a warrant, Caesar medical records. You tell Mr. Brous, Dominic Da Vinci wants to. Yeah, I've left several messages. So you better tell Brous that unless he calls me back, I'm going to have to ask him the questions I want to ask him on the front page of every newspaper in the country. And then I, he can respond with a postcard from the Outer Hebrides. He says, but the only place left that he can duck the press. You got all that? OK. Thank you. I got Earl Wilkes, the hotel security guy. Good. Earl, get here. Earl, Dominic Da Vinci. Earl here has been telling me uh, nothing much gets by him over at the hotel. Oh, good. You don't remember me, I bet. No. I was uh, RCMP when you were. Yeah? Yeah, I, uh, I had to uh, retire on account of uh, bad back problems. Oh, Christ, you better take a load off then. Go ahead, sit down. Let me apologize for not remembering. Uh, Detective Shannon here wasn't uh, too forthcoming on uh, what you uh, wanted to see me about. Oh, he wasn't? Well, I can help out there. We have a little mystery we're trying to unravel here, and you can help us out. It turns out that one of your bellmen apparently thought he had a dead man in one of your rooms. Uh, yeah, it turned out to be nothing. No, Earl. It turned out to be something that ended up in our morgue downstairs. No shit. The bellman identified him? Alan Bush? Cabinet minister. The one that aspirated on his own vomit, Earl. Well, he wasn't in there when, uh, when Willie took me in the room. That's a surprise right there. Here you are, our next cop. There's foul play suspected. There's a woman run out in a hotel bill. And you, as a next member, didn't do anything about any of it. If there had been foul play, there'd be some evidence of a crime. I looked. I didn't see a crime scene. And I've been on plenty of those. The bellman said you weren't answering your phone, so he went looking for you. It said it took him 25 minutes to find you. Well, he must not have been looking too hard, because I was around. Yeah, and when he found you, you were on the loading dock next to the kitchen. Yeah, and I was having a smoke. Well, you see, the minister was moved surreptitiously from your hotel to his home. Now. That takes knowledge of the hotel. And seeing there's only you and a couple of bellmen and a desk clerk and the kitchen staff working, you can guess who our money is on. You guys are chasing geese here. You want to keep making inferences, I'm going to get me a lawyer. Knock yourself out. What else do you got? We got the hotel phone log. We got a call made from that hotel room to an unavailable number. Now, a block call like that is usually from a cell phone. OK. Now we got another call coming into the hotel at 2.47 to your desk. And that call lasted for four minutes. Now, we're going to find out who those numbers belong to. And if it turns out they belong to the same person, then we are going to know that you are in this up to your pension plan. You want a pin interfering with human remains on me? It's a chicken shit summary conviction offense. $2,000 fine. Do your worst. OK. Now look at this. Unless we're looking at a mighty big shish kebab, I think this is the weapon. A hockey stick. Found it in the backyard barbecue. You got evidence there was a weapon involved? Well, pathology thinks the wound to the head was more like a laceration than a puncture. Maybe with this. And that's evidence that she could have been injured upstairs first. So the husband hits her on the head with the stick. Top of the stairs. She tumbles down into the basement. Bleeds on the way down on the stairs. All right, so you get married, and the honeymoon was over when? A couple months later, a year? What's that supposed to mean? The yelling and the screaming. Enough to get the police out at your place four times. We had a uh, passionate relationship. We loved each other. In the last couple of days, it's been pretty rough for you, though. Hardest thing I ever went through. I can relate. So you've been out of work for how long? Year, year and a half. Wow. 
Must have been tough to make ends meet. You must owe a lot of people money, credit cards maxed out. Some months are rougher than others. Marjorie do anything for work? Help you out with the bills? She cleaned houses for one of them maid service two or three days a week. Not enough for the two of you to get by, though. No. So you and Marjorie fought and you argued about money. You married? Because anyone that's married argues about money. Right. She probably didn't understand half the time what you were going through trying to get a job. Well, I've always worked. Yeah, so now there's no jobs. You got your pride, that's all you got. That's right. She starts belittling you a little bit, cutting you down, make you feel small. And finally, you got no choice. You gotta, you gotta show her who's boss. And just one time, things get a little out of hand, and you hit her hard, she trips. Boom. Like a sack of shit. I know you do. I would. Anybody would. But you didn't mean to do it, right? You didn't mean to do that. You see, that wouldn't be right. Because you just don't hit a woman. Hey, Kim. Hi. Come on in. I, uh... Brought a little peace offering. Our old favorite. Yeah, nice thought. I'm not drinking, though. Oh, since when? Since I gotta get up at 5.30 in the morning and work a 10-hour shift every day. Oh, just 10. <laughs> I can't seem to remember you ever working less than 12. Point is, I gotta get up early. Ah, uh, well, do you mind if I have a glass? I've been on my feet all day. Job interviews. Kind of rather we didn't. Ooh. Nice glasses. You've gotten rather domestic all of a sudden. I'd be happy to talk with you, Kim, but not if you're going to drink. Actually, I've been thinking about what to say to you for about a year now. Maybe we should just go through a lawyer, huh? Oh. Sure. Oh, sure. What, you got some high-powered guy? Huh? Oh, no, 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 no. Not a guy. A woman. That would be the way you would go. What'd you expect? What am I supposed to do? You blew the mediator right out of the water when she said she thought the terms were reasonable. You freaked reasonable. out. Reasonable? For who? I mean, you're the one with the full-time job and all the benefits. What have I got, huh? I'm out there looking for temp jobs, and I'm standing in line in the welfare office. Stop yelling. Maybe we should do this another time, huh? What are you going to do, throw me out again? No. You can help yourself out. Here you go. Just leave. No. No. All right. Forget the wine. Okay? I'm reasonable. I see what I have to do. I have to start all over again and prove to you that we can put this back together. You'll see. I still love you. Always have. I'm not gonna give up. So when the shit starts to fly, you're like the minister's janitor, right? You fly right in, you start cleaning it up before it starts to stink. Am I right? You know, I, I agreed to this conversation on the condition we'd be discussing a hypothetical situation. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, let's just start right there then. Hypothetically, if the minister died a natural death, the worst we're looking at is illegally removing a dead body. But the way this is playing out so far, the way the RCMP lab can't seem to give me back my tox results, I'm starting to think something else is in the game. Well, I can only surmise that Mr. Bush had a rendezvous with a woman in the hotel after the fundraiser. At some point, he expired. At that time, someone would have alerted someone who would then have responded to the situation. They would have assessed the death was natural. 
Hey, that's a hell of a good trick, because I usually have to wait for the autopsy report myself, but then, you know, uh, Well, I'm sure it was never the intention of any of the parties involved to do anything but avoid some unnecessary publicity surrounding the death. A uh, politically sensitive time. It's always that time. Boy, boy, oh boy. Are we getting anywhere here? What do you think, Leo? I don't know. There's a couple of hypothetical characters that I'd like to talk to, you know? The guy that took the call from the woman in the hotel and the woman herself. And pretty soon this hypothetical is going to go right out the window because reality's going to come kicking in that front door. Okay? I took the call from the hotel. Yes. We know. So who's the woman who did the Ben Johnson there in the hotel? Yeah, and don't tell us it was Rita Morgan because we all know that that's not her real name. Gentlemen. It was an indiscreet act. Okay, well, I want to talk to all the indiscreet parties, and I want to talk to them pretty goddamn quick. The trail of blood on the stairs belonged to the husband. What? This doesn't seem right. It was his blood on the hockey stick, too. What about the wife's blood? Only at the bottom of the stairs where she was found. Hmm. We'll see how this plays for you, then. Okay, her husband comes home drunk, right? We know that. She gets on his case, so he starts to wail on her. In self-defense, she grabs a hockey stick, hits him on the head, opens up a wound, right? Now he's really pissed. Grabs a stick away from her, chases her down into the basement, leaves a trail of blood on the way down, kills her with a hockey stick at the bottom of the stairs. Well, going with that, you should find some of her blood on the stick, too. Nope, didn't find any. Really? talk politics. I don't know about any payoffs or scandals or who's screwing who, all right? That's not exactly accurate. You know who's screwing you. I did nothing wrong. Stupid, maybe. Well, if you didn't do anything wrong, then what do you got to hide? Look, you know how they say behind every successful man there's a woman? Well, I'm the woman behind the woman behind the man. Okay. I made my bed. It's uncomfortable. I live with that. And now suddenly I'm being asked to cover up for something I didn't want anybody knowing about in the first place. And guess who's going to be labeled a slut for it? Well, it's better than being labeled a criminal conspirator, don't you think? Like I said, I slept with him. No different than a couple of other times. Well, the only difference being he didn't get up and go to work this morning. Look, I was in the shower when he died. I came out and... So he came out. I wanted out of this relationship, all right? But every time I thought I was free, he'd, he'd call me and I'd get sucked right back in again. And every time it's in a hotel room or, or somebody's upstairs bedroom. Wait a minute, every time? How long has this been going on? Ten years. Anybody else know about this relationship? Rouse, his wife. His wife? What did I just say? She knew. Okay. So can we deal with the night in question here? What happened after that fundraiser? I took a room in the hotel. There was a big reception after a speech. Were you drinking? Yeah, I had a couple sitting up in the room waiting. Uh, what about the, uh, the minister, Alan? He liked his scotch. He was a little drunk when he came up to the room. What time was that? About 1, 1.30. We spent some time together, you know, in bed. Is that how he died? Yeah. I screwed him to death. You see what I'm saying? Everybody just assumes that I did something. And they will, too, until they hear a plausible explanation. That's just how it is. Okay, look. This is how it happened, all right? Alan said he was hungry as usual. So I ordered up room service as usual. Then I got up and I took a shower as usual. Shit. And that's the last time I saw him alive. All right, so you come out of the bathroom. He's dead. Yes. He'd thrown up all over himself, all over the sheets. Looked like he choked or something. Is that when you took off? No. That is when I called Browse and told him what happened. What was his reaction? He told me to get out of there. No, oh my God, what a tragedy. Just straight to business. He told me to meet him around the corner so I could give him the room key. Did he meet you? Yes. And what was his plan? Did he say what he was going to do? Check on him. Call his wife. He said he'd give me enough time to get out of there, and that's all. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Hey, Ange. Got Marjorie Diggins' medical file here. Mm -hmm. She's had the same doctor since she was born. Other than uh, childhood immunizations, broken arm as a kid, a little bout of STD at 20, there's nothing in here. Really? 
Listen to this. This is from emergency. It's what you've been waiting for. November 94, admitted to the hospital, treated for two broken ribs. What did I say? August 95, admitted for a broken collarbone. April 96, bruising to the back, shoulders, and face. October 98, stitches to the forehead. That son of a bitch was beating the crap out of her. Take a look at the name. Right away, she starts going on at me for having a couple of beer. And I tried to calm her down. But then she starts screaming, she's gonna call the police again and say that I was beating on her. But I wasn't gonna do that again. But then she grabs a hockey stick and hits me over the head with it. Look. Lewis, why didn't you show us that before? Because every time you friggin' cops that come to the door, you take her side. I was just trying to get a hold of the stick. I was just trying to stop her. And things were so bad for so long. Why didn't you just walk out the door? Sickness in and help. Better for worse. Let's go back to that first call at 3.03 a.m. from the hotel to this residence. Who was that call from? I think you know. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's pretend, okay, that I'm this dolt. That should be easy enough for you. We pretend I'm this dolt who needs things to be spelled out to him, plain and simple, because that's the kind of guy that I am. From the top, please, one more time. Dennis Browse. And that conversation went like what? He explained that my husband had died. He tells you your husband died. He tells you maybe you should get out of the house. That's what he suggests. He suggests maybe you go to your sister's house. How did that please go? He led me in that direction. OK. OK, thank you. He led, and you followed. This is the part that gets me. Why would you do it? Why would you get yourself involved in a, uh, a cover-up like this? That's a criminal act. My husband was a good man, Mr. Da Vinci. He did good things. If he were found dead in a hotel room with a woman who wasn't his wife, that is the only thing people would remember about him. And that's why you lied, because you had to protect your husband's good name? Yes. It wasn't because then his seat there was becoming suddenly vacant up there in Parliament, and you thought, well, I could take advantage of this, fulfill your ambitions politically, maybe take a shot at his seat? No. And I resent that inference. Oh, well, I'm sure the electorate would resent that inference, too, if they knew. Is that all? I think so. No, 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 no. OK, I got to be honest. For the sake of accuracy, I need to go through this one more time. Take me through it, OK? So here's Dennis Browse. He's calling your residence at 3 o'clock in the morning. Let's just keep the cabinet minister in the freezer and not release his body to the funeral home, and let's just keep the autopsy results private for now. All right. OK. Mm-hmm. Helen? Yes. I want you to call these people, OK? You call these people, and you tell them to come down here this afternoon for a meeting. And if anybody gives you a hard time, let me know, because I'll issue a warrant. They have to appear. And Browse, if he gives you a hard time, you know what you tell him? You tell him from me that if he doesn't come down here, I will personally show up over there and warrant his hypothetical ass. OK. Hey, did you see this? Mrs. Bush is running in a by-election for her husband's seat. <clears throat> Louis Diggins, is the decision of the Crown Council to proceed with the charge of second-degree murder. You're under arrest. Please step outside. I'm arresting you for the murder of Marjorie Diggins. 
It's my duty to inform you that you have the right to retain and instruct counsel. You're not obliged to say anything. Anything you do say may be given as evidence. Uh, the reason I wanted you all here was, uh, well, I felt that it was appropriate that you should hear it from me firsthand. Right directly from me before you hear it at the inquest, because, yeah, we're going to go to the inquest. Now, I gave all of you the opportunity to speak to me plainly and openly. And each one of you has spurned that opportunity to do so. And so I've had to waste a lot of goddamn time and money because you all live under the impression that Alan Bush was above the law and your association with him puts you above the law? Well, okay. Okay, let me just quote from whoever it was who said it. I can't remember who it is now, but uh, that justice must not only be done, but it must also be seen to be done. Is this ringing any bells here? So that's it, okay? That's the outcome. I'm gonna see all the inquests. I'm sorry. I just wanna apologize right now if, if I've wasted any of your time here on something like trivial like this. Very peaceful. What? He took a nap this morning, and, and that was it. Sorry, Mom. I'm all right. right. You, you go and say goodbye to your papa. Okay. 